welcome to this third video where we've been dealing with Psalm 46 in three chunks. The first chunk, verses 1 to 3, we've looked at uh, God's protection. In the last video, we looked at God's presence. And then thirdly, we're looking today at God's preeminence. Let me start, as we've done each of these videos, by reading the uh, last chunk of Psalm 46, starting at verse 8. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So here we've got uh, a, a common Old Testament picture comes to the fore. One of the pictures that we see of what God's like in the Old Testament and to some degree in the New Testament is that of a divine warrior where God himself comes and fights. Exodus 15 says, our God is a warrior. Come, where God comes and fights on behalf of his people. He comes and he fights against Pharaoh and demonstrates uh, his strong arm in seeing his people released from slavery and leaving Egypt and coming out uh, towards the promised land. And this is a common picture that we see we see it at the end of Isaiah we see it in Psalm 68 may God arise may his enemies be scattered uh, we even see it in little details in the Old Testament such as uh, when the Israelites used to camp in uh, in the wilderness years as they were wandering through the Sinai desert uh, the uh, Israelites had to arrange their camp in a particular way. They were all told where to camp. Uh, and you can read this in the uh, uh, Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. And right there in the centre of the camp goes the tabernacle, the place of God's presence. That's how they organised themselves. Now, if you understand something about the uh, background in the ancient Near East, that the centre of the camp would be where the king would camp. Uh, so if the Babylonians were uh, coming out to war, the king would be in the centre and everyone else arrayed around. And that's what we've got here. And it's sending a very clear message that God, uh, it's not some human king that's king here or the warrior that's going to lead his army, but it's God himself who is the warrior who's going to lead his army to victory. And even in that little detail of the encampment arrangement, we see God as divine warriors. There's a few little signposts there that if you want to follow that, that theme, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can do that. If you want me to say more about it, send me a comment on the, uh, on the video or something, and I'll uh, record a little bit more about that theme from the Old Testament. So what we've got here is a victorious preeminent God. Uh, the invitation is to come and see what God's done on the earth. He makes wars cease. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns shields with fire. He's at work undoing war on the earth. He conquers his foes and he brings peace. It's God asserting his sovereignty over the whole earth. And for the first time as we reach verse 10 in this psalm, God himself speaks and he says uh, these words, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. It's encouraging not simply just his listeners, but all of the nations, everyone involved, to know that he is completely sovereign and actually that there's a posture and a place of trust for his people we can be still we don't need to worry the nations are also told to be still 
Whatever comes against God, he can handle it. Our God is preeminent. He's victorious. He's all conquering. He's first in rank. He's going to bring peace. A time will come where wars will cease. And as we look towards the end of uh, the Bible in Revelation 21 and 22, we get this wonderful picture of God. There'll be no more mourning or weeping. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. God himself will be with his people, restoring creation to how it should be. So whatever comes against us, whatever comes against God's people, whatever forces there are in the earth, they are defeated. And actually there is a place of rest that we can adopt and a place of confidence that we can adopt because God is victorious so when we're praying for people when we want to see when people want to be set free from things we can pray with confidence and with faith because we know that God is all conquering he has conquered he has dealt with uh, whatever problems come against us he's the one who fights on behalf of his people so whether we're praying for healing or release from anxiety or uh, for sleep for children whatever it is there's a confidence that we can come and pray with. Now, it's not to say that God will answer all of our questions, all of our uh, prayers, but actually we can adopt a posture of confidence knowing that he's in the business of uh, outworking his victory in the earth. And one day, all the nations, all the kings, all the people of the earth will know who he is. We get to enjoy that now. And we get to live in the confidence of knowing that our God brings us his protection. He's present with us and he is preeminent. Nothing can stop the rolling out of his plans on earth. I trust that's an encouragement to us this week. May God bless you. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.